So I'll see you this morning. Um, welcome any visitors this morning, anybody watching online, lovely to see you, to have you with us. Thank you for the band for playing music this morning. Josh doing audio visual. Um, I have one notice from Linda. Um, a reminder that there is a coffee morning and plant sale on Saturday from 10.30 till 12. Please bring any donations of plants, etc., from 10. Um, any help with selling the plants and garden equipment will be most appreciated. Please come along and help uh, sell and, uh, and cheer you welcome to everyone. Um, Preach this one to my wife, Julie. Um, you're not going mad. We are two weeks on the trot, so uh, yes, lucky for some. Um, please stand for the Bible and uh, my wife. Thank you. Oh, sorry, and Angela, sorry. As you've heard, the, the plant sale is next um, uh, Saturday morning. But in the afternoon, um, we at Lillington are hosting um, the members of Rugby, Brinklow and Radford Road who are going to be part of our South Warwickshire group of churches. And we're doing that so that they can meet Nick Stanion. I mean, we've had the fortune of knowing him and meeting him, but there should always be a meet and greet before they actually vote, which they're going to do the next day at their own churches. So we are hosting... Um, from three o'clock to about five o'clock with a light afternoon tea. It's going to be a bring and share. Um, so, and we'll just do the coffees and teas as well. But it would be wonderful if as many of you as possible could come so you could get to know the people that we're going to be sharing the minister with. Obviously, we know Radford Road folk, but we don't know many people from rugby. So that's from three o'clock. So if anybody can come along and meet people and show them our nice church and just be generally friendly um, so that we can all learn to work together um, with hopefully with Nick as our new minister. So that's three o'clock. So if you, if you want to stay to plant sale, go over the road and get a, um, some sarnies from over the road and come back. Very welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Angela. You can tell my mind's running away this morning. Um, can we also make sure our uh, mobile phones are on silence um, or turned off? That'd be lovely. Now please can we stand for the Bible and the preacher. Thank you. Please remain standing if you can. Um, good morning, and it's lovely to be with you on this Trinity Sunday. Um, I hope I'm clear today, because uh, now I've got to half term, of course, what do I get? A cold. And um, yeah, so I love to uh, use my holidays in the best way. Um, anyway, God will give me the strength. So um, please say the words in bold uh, that come on the screen. This is our open to our worship this morning. Hopefully. <laughs> holy, holy, holy is God, the sovereign Lord of all, who was and is and is to come. Praise be to God, creator, son, and spirit. Praise be to God, the perfect trinity of love. And with these words, we're going to sing our first hymn, which is Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
please be seated. Let us pray. O oh God, our mystery, you bring us to life. You call us to freedom and you move between us with love. May we so participate in the dance of your Trinity that our lives may resonate with you now and forever. Amen. Um, some prayers of confession. O oh God of all holiness, as we are here in your presence, help us to be honest about ourselves and our world, to recognise the good and the bad, our strengths and our failures, all that we have done wrong, and all the ways in which you are blessing and affirming us. We confess our sins and the sin of the world, and we ask for mercy and the wisdom and courage to change. Let us hear for ourselves the words that Jesus said to so many, your sins are forgiven and be at peace. God, the source of all life, recreates us each day. Christ has once for all redeemed the world and the Holy Spirit works to empower us in goodness. Thanks be to God, the Holy Trinity, of mercy, love and power. Amen. And let us finally say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So now I'm going to invite um, Edward, Diane and Rob up to the front and we're going to kind of meditate today and think about um, the three parts of the Trinity. So over to Edward. The Creator God. Part of God's nature is as Creator. At the beginning of the Bible, we have a story that is all about helping us to see God's hand on all creation. We think of this part of God as powerful, strong, large, and able to make something out of nothing. Perhaps when you look at a dramatic landscape or feel the power of the waves, the wind or the heat from the sun, you encounter something of this aspect of God. When some people talk about God, they are only thinking about the creator aspect of God's person. And that means they picture God as distant, difficult to relate to, or uninterested in human beings. But nothing could be further from the truth as the second person of God shows us. The Christ, the Christian Church, is founded on the stories, teachings and life of the man called Jesus Christ who lived in Palestine 2,000 years ago. There is historical evidence that there was such a man, that he was a Jewish teacher who attracted quite a few crowds during his time on earth. However, Christian tradition also teaches us that this man was also somehow fully divine, that he was both God and human. We wrestle with this mystery and try to make sense of it, However you, however you try to understand it, what Jesus Christ shows us is that God is not distant 
or absent, God is close. The Jesus stories tell us that God comes alongside us in our pain, in our loneliness, and the things we worry about. The relationships we have. God is love, and God shows us how to love by coming as vulnerable, normal, human baby and living alongside us. Christ is God made human. And finally, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is part of God that is still at work in the world, moving amongst us, prompting, prodding, flooding in and overwhelming us. The Spirit is all amongst and around us. Therefore, we are simply invited to notice, to become aware, to recognise, to connect with the spiritual. We do this when we see beauty in God's creation, when we appreciate those close to us, when we hear birdsong or a favourite piece of music, when we enjoy good food, when we laugh together. Thank you, Edward, Diane and Rob. And there you can see the three parts of what is the, the Trinity. God the Father, who created the world. God the Son, when he came as a human being to, to our world and to die for our sins. And then to leave us with the Holy Spirit, which is there as a comforter too. So hopefully these visions and, and the words that you've just heard will help you think today in the service about the Trinity and how difficult it is at times to explain all of the connections of who our God is. But sometimes we just need to simplify it. God loves us and is three parts in one. And we're going to use these words now um, to sing our next hymn, which is Father, we love you and we glorify your name. We're now going to hear our gospel reading um, from Phil. So just get in the mic. <clears throat> Good 
Our reading can be found in the New Testament section of our Bibles on page 20. And it's John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things no one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven the son of man and just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness so must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Here ends our reading. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Phil. We're now going to sing our next hymn, uh, which is In Christ Alone.
So we've just heard today's Bible passage from Phil, which begins with Nicodemus meeting Jesus at night. The reason for this secret of meeting at night is probably because of who Nicodemus was. He was a prominent rabbi, greatly respected by his community, and as mentioned in verse 1, was a member of the ruling council. For all of Nicodemus's power, it is both striking and interesting how he recognises something different about Jesus. Bearing in mind that Jesus would have known the Jewish law inside out, as well as Nicodemus, it was very interesting how Nicodemus was able to see that something else that Jesus could offer. And as he states in verse 2, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs that you are doing if God were not with him. Nicodemus confirms that he understands Jesus, that he has come from God. Although does not go as far as to confirm that Jesus is, of course, the Messiah. That Jesus is that servant that has been sent by God, of course, to do that one and only mission, which is to die for all of us. In verse 3, Jesus replies to Nicodemus, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now, at this point, I can just imagine the conversation and Nicodemus kind of scratching his head at this reply from Jesus. To be born again, Nicodemus is considering this point in human terms. And therefore, that, of course, is impossible to happen. Because Nicodemus says, how can someone be born when they are old? Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. But Jesus then explains to him that you cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you were born of water and the spirit. Being born of the flesh results in more flesh. But being born of the spirit results in more spirit. Jesus rebukes Nicodemus and he tells him, you are an Israel's teacher and you do not understand these things. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still people do not accept our testimony. In other words, As our communities try and persecute and deflate our own spiritual experiences by judging what bits they believe and don't believe, without even fully listening to the testimonies of these people that have experienced it, what happens then to our belief? We, of course, know as Christians, by living in a world where there is much news, The majority, of course, which all we get to hear, is not good. But nowadays, there's the complication of fake news as well. And people are trying to sift out what is real and what isn't. Because we now have this AI that's coming into technology too. And many different industries, and dare I say it, education, no doubt, will be using this as well. And it's difficult because we should be thinking for ourselves. We shouldn't need a program of any description telling us what to think. The truth is they don't know what is real and what isn't. And how can they? Were they there? No. So what usually happens is we judge one another. We presume that the reporter or the news article that we see is correct. And of course, that can be a dangerous path to go down. 
As Christians, we all need to pray at this time for wisdom to help us sort the wheat from the chaff. The obscure reference to Moses and the serpent in verse 14, I must admit, did make me shiver. I have a massive phobia of snakes. And I think back to why that is. Apart from the fact that Ireland supposedly doesn't have any snakes, because by legend, they were all put into a big box in the Irish Sea, and that's why it's rough. That's what I was told. <laughs> Maybe that's right. I don't know. Um, but I do remember, as a young girl, definitely with a children's Bible, and there were m these really expressive pictures of the stories. And of course, there was this, there was Moses and there was this massive, like, python snake wrapped round this pole. And I remember thinking, oh, I don't like that. And um, that vision always stayed with me because ever since, I don't even like seeing them on TV. But of course, that serpent in verse 14 comes from the story of the plague of poisonous snakes amongst the Israelites and that can be found in obviously the book of Numbers. But in verses 16 and 17, and this is what I feel the crux of the matter, we get that well-known verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save the world through him. And Jesus makes it clear that this is God's why. God sends us all the spirit with love. And we must take up our cross in order to be born again. Augustine once said that if you deny the Trinity, you will lose your soul. If you try and explain it, you will lose your mind. But our passage today touches on the Godhead, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three equally divine persons in one. And through the complexity and confusion in trying to understand it, now is the time to be a Nicodemus. We essentially need to come back to our faith. And John 3.16 does this so well. Everything goes back to the cross. This is what it is all about. I often sit down with a sigh and say, what's it all about? And perhaps this is one of the signs of me getting older, not quite sure. But you find yourself questioning life at certain moments as you go on in your journey. And if you're in a witness to someone new, about who God is, and you're struggling to explain what he can do, turn to John 3, 16. Because that gives the answer as to what it is all about. Up to this point, I've challenged you with quite a few questions. And I've said, are you ready? Last week, I asked you, are you ready to be transformed? And today, I want to ask you, are you a Nicodemus? Because if so, you need to transform in order to be ready. See what I did there? So transform in order to be ready. I want to share with you a poem that talks about Nicodemus as this Pharisee that people at that time knew very well his status. 
Nicodemus prayed to God to come into his heart. He always wanted to serve and do his rightful part. Sees many people going, and as time did go by, still was apprehensive, regardless he would try. Wanting to see Jesus goes in the dark of night for answers to questions to bring forth in the light. He did meet with Jesus, and the Lord told him this. You must be born again, or heaven you will miss. How is that even possible to enter the womb again? Jesus said, spirit is born of spirit to save the souls of men. So that's given us a little idea as to what Nicodemus's part was. Yes, he was a knowledgeable man at that time, but he still needed to confess and he needed to say who God really was. And Jesus was, of course, the one that answered all of those questions for us. I want to do something a little bit different because normally I give the invitation at this point for anyone that needs to pray, to ask God into their lives for the first time. We're going to do something that it's probably fair to say we don't do a lot. Um, we're going to affirm our faith because this is Trinity Sunday. So I'd like us to affirm our faith with the words that will be coming up on the screen now. <laughs> so you can do this from your seat, that's fine. But let us say these words together. We believe in the one and only God, eternal Trinity, from whom, through whom, for whom all created things exist. God alone, we worship in God, we put our trust. We worship God, source and sustainer of creation, whom Jesus called Father, whose sons and daughters we are. We worship God, revealed in Jesus, Christ, the eternal word of God, made flesh, who lived our human life, died for sinners on the cross, who was raised from the dead and proclaimed by the apostles, Son of God, who lives eternally, a saviour and sovereign, coming in judgment and mercy to bring us eternal life. We worship God, Holy Spirit, who brings this gospel to fruition, assures us of forgiveness, strengthens us to do God's will, and makes us sisters and brothers in Jesus, sons and daughters of God. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, united in heaven and on earth, on earth the body of Christ, empowered by the Spirit to glorify God and to serve humanity in heaven, eternally one with the power, the wisdom and the love of God in Trinity. We believe that in the fullness of time, God will renew and gather in one all things in heaven and on earth through Christ and be perfectly honoured and adored. Amen. Stop there. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you that you can speak to us every Sunday, that you can give us your words about what you feel we need to do to be right with you. Lord, we thank you for that privilege that on that Calvary Hill, you were on that cross for each and every one of us. And Lord, we just ask you to be with us all in the days that lie ahead. Amen. And we're going to continue with our prayers.
as we have our intercession prayers. Let us pray. The bidding to this is holy, holy, holy. And you will say, holy, holy, holy is the God of all creation. O oh God, we thank you for the gift of yourself as Holy Trinity, for the revelation that you are as you are in Jesus, and that you are present with us and through the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the invitation to share in the loving community at your heart. Give us such a true and deep sense of your holiness and beauty, of your strength and your love, that we may receive the gift of your presence with us. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the God of all creation. O oh God, we thank you for the holy gift of human life, for people who love us and befriend us, for food to eat, for beauty to enjoy, for work and leisure, youth and age. We thank you for the mysteries that delight us and the sense that life is a wonder. Help us to know already in this world the holiness and mystery of eternity. Holy, 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 holy is the God of all creation. O oh God, we thank you for the world you have made, for its diversity and beauty, and for the people who inhabit it with us. We pray that we will learn how to treasure the holiness of the world and all of its people and its lands. We pray and long for a just and lasting peace in everywhere. Help us to be peacemakers and advocates for justice as you give us power and purpose wherever we are. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the God of all creation. O oh God, we thank you for our friends and our families, for our neighbours and our colleagues. Help us to honour them all as your holy children and to be attentive to the holiness in each person. We pray for those who are ill or in any kind of distress or trouble. Touch them with your peace and help us to bring them comfort and hope. Holy, 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 holy is the God of all creation. And now a time to bring our own prayers before the Lord. O oh God, we pray together in a time of silence we're offering the deepest prayers of our hearts and waiting on the holiness of your love. Holy, 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 holy is the God of all creation. Merciful Father, accept these prayers with our hearts. We ask this all in your name. Amen. We're now going to sing our next hymn, which explains about God's wonder and his three parts in one, how great thou art.
please be seated. Now is the time to give your offerings to this church. Merciful Father, accept these gifts and with them our lives to be used in service for you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is I Need Thee Every Hour. I Need Thee Every Hour.
go in peace to love and serve God, the holy and undivided Trinity, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Quite cheeky, but can we sing the grace? I don't think I warned you. Thank you.